everyone. Welcome to the Dream Catcher podcast, a place where your dreams can find a voice. The family is the basis of every human, and these relationships cannot be underestimated. The beliefs, norms, and patterns that we've learned from our families significantly impact our lives. One way to overcome the negative and destructive patterns that we've inherited is through family constellations. My guest, Maureen Selany, has been helping her clients overcome years and generations of unhappiness and suffering. She's here to tell us more about her process. Maureen Selany is a New York City, Miami-based family constellations therapist and author of Connected Fates, Separate Destinies. Maureen has partnered with Goop Health and Hay House as an expert. She also facilitates retreats and workshops, speaks at conferences, and is featured on numerous podcasts and articles. Her unique approach to family constellations helps people heal from family wounds and find individual blocks rooted in the family system. During our discussion, Maureen is going to help us understand how generational trauma affects the way we approach the world. She'll explain how family constellations can break away from dysfunctional patterns and become the best versions of our adult self. If you like what you heard, please don't forget to like, rate, share, and subscribe to this podcast. Thanks. Hi, Maureen. How are you today? I'm good, and you? Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, of course. I'm just so happy that you're here with us today to tell us more about your journey and uh, your work in family constellations. I actually did a workshop many years ago, and I had a pretty interesting experience, a very, very intense one, where there was a lot of releasing happening within me and in the people around me. It was actually kind of... Uh, it was a very emotional experience because there were some people crying and shouting. So it was intense, but I think it was really, really effective. And uh, when I heard about you and the work that you do, I was like, I need to get her on the show to talk about this because I experienced it firsthand. Thank you. I'm glad you had a um, positive and intense experience, no matter what the word intense is always, you know, like how you want to describe a family constellation workshop. So yes, it is intense. It is overwhelming even sometimes because like yes. you just say, it's very emotional. So yes. Yeah. Especially if you had a lot of baggage, you know, that you, you yes. weren't aware of. Yeah. So we'll get more into that later on. But for now, Maureen, I want to talk to you about you and how you got into this work. I mean, family constellations is a very specific type of healing. Um, so what about it called to you and inspired you to do, you know, that type of work? Okay. So long story short, back to Paris, I studied psychology because I wanted to become a psychologist. And then when I got graduated, I was like, um, let me move to America. You know, like I felt the call to move to America, Miami. And I met a woman who introduced me to family constellations. And I was so amazed about the power, the intensity. And also I would say some reality check of no Marie. Whatever you thought was your truth, was your reality, it's actually the opposite. And I just fell in love with family constellations. And why I got so hooked about it, it's because a few years before, my father abandoned us. And I could not understand why. I was very um, clueless, pointless. Like after 20 years of living all together, deciding after divorcing, you know, like with my mom to abandon your kids as well, Something, you know, like was missing in my own understanding in order to heal. And so I decided to study family constellations to actually understand my father. I was obsessed, you know, by it. And um, later on, the good news is I met my father, we reconciled and everything. But uh, yeah, I guess I was just addicted 
to my story and I just wanted to understand what happened and why in my present moment I could not be in a healthy relationship with a man. Um, I was rejecting my own abundance. You know, like all of my questions got finally an answer. And it was a very solid answer. Like this thing, like you can feel in your core, this is exactly what it is. And this is what I loved about Family Constellations. I see. So you were, you were able to find answers to the, your own challenges that you faced. So did he, he just left one day? He didn't even like leave a note no. or no. give any warning. He just <sighs> disappeared. My parents, my mom asked for divorce when I was 21, 22. And so my brother was 17, 18. A divorce is between a wife and a husband. No, really, it's not about the children. But my father made the choice to also divorce from his kids. So we had a last lunch all together um, in January 2008. And then I left with my mom. And then he vanished. It was like he was never, never... Um, part of my life and then finally in 2015 I sent him an email and slowly but surely he came back into our life and do you think That's it happened I, because you did the work the healing honestly work? honestly yes because when it happened in 2008 I was so angry you know like I had a lot of rage a lot of um misconception like fake belief like it was very messy within myself like a lot of rage and anger and by working on my family system by seeing another perception of what happened because the truth is my father was abandoned by his own father so he just you know like repeated a pattern of abandoning your children so from that moment i was like that's interesting how come you know like how come my father despite his painful story with his own father decided to do the same to his children and that's when family constellations became for me like just um that's the truth of your story. You either accept it or not, but you cannot do anything else with it. And right. it, it is so much peace. So when my father in 2015 came back, I was not angry anymore. I was like, you know what? I'm open to whatever you can give me now. That's beautiful. So you were able to open up and just hear his side of the story. You know the funny story, when we um, reconciled, the first time we met again, we never talked about what happened. Never. We never wow. mentioned it. Never. It's a few years after that finally I was able to tell my dad that I was hurt by what he did but that now is here and we're going to focus on the now. And I know he's doing his best, I'm doing my best, and he is the perfect father for me, whatever, you know, like it is. Well, I'm so glad you were able to reconcile with him and talk to him about it because unfortunately a lot of people don't get to do that. You know, they just, they don't have that, that closure or they're not able to find that, uh, that peace that you had. You are absolutely right. And because my father is emotionally shut down. Like, you know, like it's... and Yeah, men from older generations tend to be like that. They're quite disconnected from their emotions in general. Yeah. In general. Yes. In general, you know, like, and my father is, his background is from Germany and Prussia. So again, <laughs> <Yeah>. very, you know, like... <laughs> 
yeah. and like not out of so even society. more so in those cultures. <laughs> <laughs> so yes i completely agree with you <laughs> all right well thank you for sharing your story with us marine um well let's talk about family constellations specifically i mean it is it assumes that anything that happened in our family line or throughout our family history impacts the way we think feel and behave right now as you just mentioned uh in your story so could you please tell us more about that? Could you expand on it a little bit? So family constellations, first of all, um, it's from Germany, the founder of the therapy is Bert Hellinger. And family constellations helps you to uncover, okay, and dissolve anything affecting your um, health, your career, your love life, your friendship through your family story. Because the first foundation of your life is your family. That's the first system you belong to. And wherever you will go, whatever you will do, whoever you will meet, your family system will influence any of these different, you know, like areas of your life. So if you are still angry, if there is any secrets, any abuses, any traumas that were not taken care of during, you know, like the event, the family system is going to look for someone else to take care of it. Because the family system is always looking for reparation, reconciliation. That's how we can keep giving birth to the next generation. So that's how you can be entangled with your grandmother's fate. That's how you can see so much addictions in a family system because that's how we belong. Or a single mom, or cancer, or anxiety, or eating disorders, and so on. And until one of the family members, you, are, you know, like me, decide to acknowledge what happened, to recognize it, the family system will keep looking for someone to do it. So by just a simple act of this is what happened, this is my story, you break free. And you can finally embrace your own destiny. And when you say family system, what do you mean by that exactly? Is that like an energetic entity or something like that? So the family system is your family, your ancestors, all of the women, all of the men, all of the miscarriages, all of the abortions. It's like the entity, you know, like of your family. Everything that's behind you, that maybe you cannot see, Maybe you never met your, I don't know, great grandfather, like, or any of your ancestors, but they are, they are in your energetic field. They are here. We see. Yeah. Okay. So this happens on a metaphysical level or on a genetic level or both? Both. Both. Because on a science level, the term is epigenetic. It's when through your cells, trauma can be passed on from generation to generation. And then the metaphysical part is this, you know, energy that we can feel between each other. Like, I like him, I don't like her. Like, yeah. I yeah. feel good. That's, so that's both with your family. There is the energy that you can feel like <gasps> it's heavy. Or no, in my family, like it's full of happiness. And then there is through your cells, in your cells, you can pass on any traumas that were not recognized and acknowledged before you. Wow. Um, and what role does self-responsibility have when it comes to acknowledging all this trauma that happened in your family? Because it's easy to blame it on your uncle or your grandparents for whatever you're facing right now. So how can you really own that and say okay i need to take a look at this 
without really playing the victim or doing the blame game. So in family constellations, that's very important to understand that you are responsible for your life as an adult. As a child, you are not. Your life in a way depends of your parents' care like how your parents are gonna be here for you, how they are going to raise you and love you. But then as an adult, you got two choices. So first choice is to stay stuck in your story, being a victim. It's my father's fault. It's my uncle's fault. It's my grandmother. And there are a lot of me. people like that. There are a lot of people like a that. A lot of people, a lot of yeah. people, silly. And these people, they are just connected with a little boy or little girl and little girl or little boy they are still running the show <laughs> so as an adult it's pretty difficult and then the second choice is to be like you know what i'm an adult now and i got to choose how i want to live my life by holding on to my story i'm going to be miserable i'm going to be angry i'm going to be frustrated but if I finally acknowledge this is what happened, it was like that. I cannot do anything else. However, the love, I can give it to myself. The respect, I can give it to myself. And me, I'm going to give myself permission to change, to be different, to do better. Maybe my family is going to join me, and that will be wonderful. But maybe not. And that's okay too. Because no matter what, it's up to me to create the life that I want. So it's okay if family members don't want to join you in doing the healing. No, it's more than okay. Because everyone is different. We yeah. all what if it's a spouse? Best. What if it's a spouse? And, you know, because that's an intimate relationship. It's a relationship. It's part of the relationship. You can either grow together and heal together, which is wonderful. Or at some point, you can also be like, you know what? I think our paths are falling apart. Mm. This, again, is a choice. It's always a choice, silly. Even so, we think we don't have the choice. We still have the choice to choose what matters the most to us. So that, that power is in our hands, essentially. Always. Always. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree with you. And I also want to know, Maureen, you know, all families have some form of dysfunction. Like, they all have some type of crazy, <laughs> in other words. Uh, so does that mean that everyone is a candidate for family constellations? Or are there are only certain people who really, really could benefit from it. Everyone, <laughs> everyone, yeah. like we are all part of a family. So of course, more or less dysfunctional, huh? don't get me wrong, but so sometimes you are just gonna do one family constellation because you know, like you're already at peace with your family. Sometimes you're gonna do one, two or three years of family constellations. But I would say, yes, we are all part of a family. So no matter what, I think this work is great just to find peace, you know, like just to, to feel that I am part of this family as much as dysfunctional it is, it's okay. I can still live my own life and write my own story. Yeah. And do you find that there are certain cultures, countries, or races that have more of these issues in their family, for instance, or countries that were colonized, you know, where their ancestors suffered a lot of pain and th their freedom was uh, taken away from them. Do they have to have more healing? It depends of your resilience. Some people, you know, like being resilient. Some people, right away, they're just also going to accept their own story. These people are, I would say, easier to work with because they trust. But some other people, 
who are very stubborn, very resistant. No, I want her to pay a price. No, I am the victim here and I want to be right. They're actually the most difficult to work with. So it does not depend of the culture or the country. Of course, you know, like when your country got colonized, if you came from a slave family, for example, in America, or um, any, or refugee as well, you know, for example, like I had to leave my country because my country was at war. Yes, there is more trauma for, for sure, but it only depends on how open you are towards your healing. So you can have a very, very heavy story, but actually heal quicker than someone with, you know, like, you know, like normal, casual story family, but so resistant, so stubborn to be acknowledged that I'm right, that it can take actually a while to heal from it. Well, those kind of people wouldn't even come to you, right? They wouldn't even like consider getting therapy oh, in the first come. place. They come. Oh, they do? They, they do come, Celine. Because these type of people, they want me to tell them, you are absolutely right. That's your mom's fault. But the thing is with me, after 10 minutes talking with me, they already know that she's not going to tell me that I'm right. That's for sure. Like, I'm very straightforward. Like, I don't like wasting my time. I don't like wasting the time of my clients. I'm very like, you know what? Why don't you see this relationship through that angle? I'm here to, in a way, to push you out of your limit, out of your box, out of your comfort zone. What about this? What about that? Because that's how you can grow. But they come, Celine, they come. Okay. And are they resistant because they want to be right? Because their ego is like, no, I don't want to acknowledge that so-and-so went through this and it's impacted me. Exactly. Exactly. And I don't know if you uh, watched it, but on Netflix, there is an amazing TV show from Turkey, Another Self. And I've heard about what? it. I've heard about it. Yes. It's all about family constellations. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's I've heard about it. Family constellations and one of the characters Mm -hmm. represent you know, like the stubborn woman that's bullshit i don't believe in it what is that mm -hmm. you are telling me that my mom watch it really watch it it's amazing okay okay i will i'm gonna make a note of that and all the listeners also you know uh you can watch it if, if you feel called to um and i was i'm also curious to know uh would people from outside your biological family affect the family dynamics, for instance, like a step parent or an in-law, would they also change the configuration of the family once they come in? Yes. They represent your extended family. Like also um, your husband, your wife, um, half siblings, step siblings, adoption as well. Okay. Biological parents. Yeah, with parents, like for sure. So they do have an impact on your family system. And hopefully having a step parent will only be about love and, you know, like having a new family. But of course, sometimes when there is abuse, violence, uh, molestation, you know, sexual abuse, it can definitely impact you even more. And we will have to work with your stepdad or your stepmom or one of your cousins, for example, as well. Like it can also be like a stranger. Imagine, you know, that you got raped by a stranger. This stranger would have a place in your family system. Really? Yes, because we need to recognize him or her. So then no one else will have to repeat the same dynamic. So that's the same thing with miscarriages, abortions, and stillborn. They also belong. Because if your mom had one miscarriage before you, you are not the first one. You are the second one. Your mom had two pregnancies. 
So it's also important to find your place. Very, very important to acknowledge everyone, especially wow. this one. Wow, there's a lot to discover, huh? So much could be going on under the hood. And is this something you find out intuitively or by doing a consultation or both? I would say both. But yeah. uh, at least um, the first hour when I do an initial session with the first time client for an hour, I'm going to ask him a lot of questions about his family, mm. about his parents about his childhood, his grandparents, just to get a better sense of what we are looking for and mm -hmm. how I could help him. And then of course, but I think for any healing modalities or therapies, there is also your intuition, like something is missing, something is unspoken. And I would say after 10 years, because it's been 10 years that I've been doing family constellations, you know, sometimes I got an instinct that something or someone is missing. I just share with my clients. And I'm like, you know what? I just want to share this insight with you. If it resonates, good. If it does not, forget about it. Mm -hmm. But okay. yeah, I, I think it's important yet to lean on both. Okay. And based on my experience, I noticed how, as I said, intense the session was I actually did it in a group I don't know you do one-to-one -one sessions right and you do group sessions yes yes okay so I was in a group of about 15 people um and I could see how um how the whole process was bringing up really strong emotions and they were crying some of them were wailing um and uh I I, I was not expecting that to be honest and so what advice do you have for those people who are a little bit concerned about what might come up in the session? I would say just trust. Because this intensity, this emotional intensity, it, it's going to fade away. It's, of course, it's going to be part of the workshop for four hours, two hours. But then don't worry, because everything is just going to check its own place and it won't disturb you anymore like we are afraid of feeling our emotions because we just never learned that actually our emotions are our friends we are so stuck in our head always trying to find a logic about it that we forgot about actually our primary instinct which is to feel and I think the more you give permission to your children to feel that your emotions are valid, your feelings are valid, the easier it is to navigate your life as an adult. So we are really at the premise of doing this, of acknowledging the need of feeling. But in a constellation, I don't know for you, but you also feel so much support coming from all of the participants like you are not on your own it's like you're part of this wonderful experience and we are all here to to support each other to be here for each other i uh, i also think there is a lot of love during those workshops like yeah i did experience that too you know like there is um a softness as well yeah like they are not gonna judge me i am safe here and it actually feels so good that I think it emphasizes the emotions because you are finally at home, I would say, with complete strangers. But actually, these strangers give, give you permission to just be who you are without pretending. And when we don't pretend anymore, we can feel deeper. That's true. You could be vulnerable and just let it all come out yes yes so i mean think of it as as some kind of purging right when you when you're purging you're kind of releasing all the toxins and once it's out then you're liberated exactly yes i like this i like this example yes exactly. right 
Yeah, I mean, it was it was beautiful. I felt a lot of support from the people around me and it, I felt the love. And so for those of you who are concerned about the potential intensity, I'm not saying it's going to happen for everyone. You know, you're going to feel that sense of kinship and support from everybody. Yes, you are you are whole by this beautiful space, like people, like energy. And one of the goals of um, family constellation therapy is to heal the inner child. I mean, there's a lot we being talked about uh, the inner child and and parent the the adult self. So why is it important to our de development to really work work on those aspects of ourselves? So the goal of family constellations, yes, you're going to heal your inner child as well. But the goal of family constellation is really to reconcile with what was and what is. It's really bringing back together what was once separated. And so, of course, it's going to have an impact on your inner child. Why is it so important to heal, first thing first, your inner child? <laughs> it's because... He's the foundation of your true self. I mean, I would not be here with you, Celine, and you would not be as well without your little girl. My little girl gave me permission to be here now. And every, because I have my one years old, two years old, 10 years old, 12 years old, 15, 16, 30, 35. That's why I'm here today. Me here today, I'm completely new. I'm a blank canvas. How I can be triggered today, it's only based on my 37 younger self that did experience something and maybe they did not take care of it. So when you take care of your roots, you can feel more grounded here. And no matter what, your childhood, especially from your birth to six years old, the six first years of your life are the most important ones of your entire life. Why is that? <laughs> it's because you develop your emotional mindset. So if during the first six years, you have been seen, heard, and recognized, I guess you're going to do pretty good. Okay? Like, not perfect, but you're going you're gonna to navigate your life. But if you did not feel seen, heard, recognized, if you lost your mom, if you got sick, anything, it's going to create struggles for you as an adult. So you have to go back there to heal this part of yourself. And then you can be free in your adult life. Right. And sometimes you don't remember, right, what, what it was like in your younger years. And especially like, I've heard that you can even go back to the times when you were in your mother's womb. So first of all, you always remember, but you don't remember in your head. You remember with your feelings. Your body remembers. Uh -huh. Your body is your memory. Your body is your USB driver. <laughs> okay. Got so it. I don't need you to remember what happened to you at one year old. I just need you to feel what happened to you at one year old. Because again, you do not heal by thinking. You heal by feeling. Mm. And that's what we do in family. That's a tweet, tweet. Tweet, tweet. <laughs> tweet, tweet. <laughs> so that's what we do in family constellation because honestly, the story does not really matter to me. It's how you feel towards your story that matters to me. That's where the true healing is. But we love talking. We love telling our story. We're addicted to the story. So it gives us like some like, uh, I don't know, je ne sais quoi, but yeah. But it gives healing. us a satisfaction, right? When we have words, yeah. when you can yeah. put words to it, but sometimes we can't, right? Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, I, I think healing the inner child, like we've seen, even 60, 70 year olds acting like kids sometimes, you know, and you can tell that their inner child is still, they've not dealt with those issues, right? And it's kind of sad. Yes and no, because it was her choice or his choice. Hmm. You know, like at the end of the day, 
it's your choice of living your life like this. But you, you may have been struggling a lot because when your inner child is in charge of your life as an adult, it's draining. It's exhausting. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And don't we know some people like that? I know I do. <laughs> yeah, I do too. So, yeah. <laughs> we all do. But yeah. Great. It's a choice. It is a choice. It's always a choice. The power is within us. Exactly. Exactly. All right, Maureen, that brings us to the end of our conversation. Thank you so much for sharing your knowledge and experience with us today. It has been most enlightening. Thank you so much for having me and thank you so much for trusting me. Of course. I just want to let our listeners know that uh, Maureen's new book, Connected Fates, Separate Destinies, is available in all major bookstores. And you can also visit her website, maureensalini.com. The links will be in the description box. All right, Maureen, it's been such a pleasure and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much. You too as well. Thank you so much, Celine. Thank you. Bye.